are watching Property TV. Hello and welcome to Property Question Time. I'm Stephen Galpin and this is the show where you can have your property related questions answered by our team of experts. And joining me today is Nicholas Zopedes, founder of Nicholas & Co Surveyors. Welcome Nick. Thank you for having me. Good, Good to have you here. And John Howard, property developer, investor, mentor, author and lots of other things too. Thank you very much Stephen. Good to be back. Good. Nice to have you here John as always. Um, Nicholas. I'm going to start with you. Mm. I'm about to enter into a long lease for a warehouse building and would like advice on the following. To complement the warehousing operation, I may wish to add a small retail operation from the same building. Would this in the panel's view require planning consent? Secondly, as it is a long full repairing lease, would it be advisable to have a full survey undertaken? I think you're going to say yes to the second one. Yes to the second one. Uh, we'll start with the first. It's not something I've, I've come across before. So the things that scream out at me at the moment is ensuring that um, it's not prohibited under the terms of the lease. So you'd have to seek landlord's consent or review the lease. And if so, you would require a license of alterations to document the works. And also thinking out loud is um, whether you are allowed to do subdivision within terms of the lease if that would require change of use if you're doing one section retail and one section uh, warehouse so that could potentially um, require planning consent and as to the second point yes uh, you can get a building commercial building survey or a condition survey I would also advise to actually get a schedule of um, conditions a yeah. photographic schedule of conditions yeah. um, as part of the lease um, which would document essentially any or detail any defects or imperfection in the property. So, you know, when you come to the end of your lease and you have a dilapidation claim, it will limit your repair liabilities. Yes. So. Now, look, look as, a, as a qualified surveyor, I know you're probably going to pull a bit of a face at this, but I think, I think having looked at some of these sort of things before, I think it's imperative that you talk to your landlord. You know, it, your landlord is not your enemy. No, he's, I agree. He's, he's going to want you to be successful of with course, your business. Yeah. Now, I appreciate here there's one or two factors, isn't there? So you've got a warehousing operation. Some of your goods may be suitable for retailing. So that's what you want to do. You want to have a little counter there, perhaps at mm. the front door. Trade or, counter. Trade really counter sort probably. of thing, yeah. Mm. Um, whether that has any health or safety implications, public coming into the warehouse mm. as opposed to just your mm. your workers and delivery yeah. people that are properly insured, I, I don't know. But again, it, go back to the landlord, I would I would suggest, and, and, Always. and, and talk it over. And again, on the planning issue, then, you know, most councils these days have a duty officer on in the planning department mm -hmm. every day. Well, they might be at home, but they're on the phone. They might be at home, yes. Yeah. But um, all, all, all you have to do is, <laughs> yeah, is ask. Again, they're yeah. not your enemy. They're, no, not, they're, they're not trying which to trip you ultimately up. Ultimately, you're you know? paying them, as I always say. Yeah. Mm. Do you, you can care with all of that. You? you know what? You talk a lot of sense. And um, I totally agree. And uh, Nick Nick's made some very good points, obviously, as a as professional and... and um, what he's saying is, is absolutely right. And from a landlord's point of view, you know, I'm delighted to hear that someone wants to uh, to uh, change the planning because one, they need my consent and two, I might get some more rent, Nick, mightn't I? You might, you yeah. might. Look on and, the bright yeah. side. Yeah, and they have to pay your fees. Yeah. And they pay uh, your fees more, right? <laughs> yeah. For acting for me, there's which you do, hopefully. There's a song about that, yeah, there there is, yeah. look, look on the yeah. bright side. Always look on the bright side. <laughs> and it, and uh, But you know, the, the relationship with the tenant and, and the landlord is really important. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. you as an it's agent, and you as an agent and surveyor is very important in that because mm. you're pivotal. You, mm -hmm. You're the one in the middle c that can yeah. control that relationship. So that's great. Yeah, it's all about managing relationships Absolutely. in in yeah. our industry. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. You don't see any sort of huge problems lying there for you. I, I no. mean, I think most landlords would would consent, wouldn't they not? Yeah, um, and actually within the terms of the lease. Uh, um, 
especially in new leases, that you know, it can't it, be withheld anyway. It, it might say un reasonably. without be unreasonably withheld. Yeah. Might it? That's, that's the term in exactly. knowledge, isn't it? Yeah. Unreasonably yeah. withheld. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine it coming up quite a lot because, I mean, we're at a stage where everybody... I, I think my feeling about business at the moment is, is that... Um, Earlier in the year, everybody was really wanting to hit the ground mm. running. Yeah. I think we've had one or two little setbacks, politically, for instance, yeah. that have just taken the edge oh. off people's confidence. Yes. Yeah. But at this Inflation as well. Yeah, but at this point in time, we've got to look at opportunities of improving our business, yeah. going out, expanding yeah. the ideas, yeah, being more open-minded. Yeah. Without so. question. And, and, and like, we, like we've said before, you know, business is changing. The way yeah. business is done is changing. How That's many people? Probably, yeah. you the know, landlord will you, see it favourably. The three of us are wearing to, a suit. Th the three of us are wearing a suit. Mm. The rest of the country aren't anymore. You know, I mean, it's all changing, and it all, you know, that's how it that's how it happens, isn't it? Yes. I mean, there are, you know, perverse things happen. I mean, we've had all this fuss about, you know, the the company whose name starts with an A, you know, causing all this trouble on the high street. And what do we find now? That that self same company is opening their own shops, <laughs> retail exactly. shops. I mean, they, they, they've done a full circle. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. Anyway, strange times, I suppose. Yep, very strange. All right, thank you for that, uh, Nicholas. Uh, John. Yes. Well, this is a first on the uh, question. <laughs> oh, my time. goodness me, that worries me. All right. What's the question? <laughs> my question yes. is for Mr. Howard. Oh, is it? I have been following Mr. Howard yep. on both Property TV and YouTube right, for yeah. some time now. All right. His advice always seems solid and most helpful. So I'd like to ask him if you could have had one piece of advice offered to you when starting out in property development, what would it have been? Well, first of all, it's very nice that someone actually calls him Mr. Howard because I, I, that's a rare, rarity yeah. these days. I can what's it, what's even nicer? We know we've got a viewer. <laughs> yeah, that's better still. Yeah, and also I've got a viewer on my YouTube, which yeah. is uh, yeah. which is, which is great. Um, what I would say uh, it's a question I get asked. Uh, it's a question I get asked. Um, it, it, in a different way quite often when I meet people. And what I would say is over the years, my one big regret, if you like, and I've been at the job 43 years and, and you've been at it 89, 90 years or whatever it is. But 102. 102 years, is it? Yeah. But what I would say is I've always been a dealer and a trader, Nick. And when I look, I mean, I'm a developer as well, of course. But when I look back, I have probably jumped too soon and, and moved property on too quickly. Right. So in many cases, I've bought and sold it before I paid for it, if you get my mean, to someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, that happens sometimes. Yeah, does, yeah. and, and taken a profit when really um, I would have been better to hold it for a year or two and, and sort of things out and made a bigger profit. Because the problem is when you trade and you're buying and selling, mm. you're always under pressure to find that next deal. Always, and I'm still under that pressure now to find the next deal. And when you have backers, and I've had backers for 30, 35 years, same backers, mm. which is wonderful. But of course, the next thing, they forget you've just sold something well and got the money for them and shared it with them. They go, well, where's the next deal? Well, you know, we could have kept that deal and done better with it, mm. but we didn't. Now we've got to rush and run around and find another one. And I would say the answer to the question is I, I've reacted too quickly to situations I should have just actually stepped back sometimes. Although I could have made a, a, a profit quickly, I'd have made a lot more money on occasions if I'd mm. taken my time. I, I, I can remember falling out with some partners about this subject because I, I, I was doing quite a lot of trading, sort of yeah. buying one day and almost yeah, exactly. selling yeah. the next they were day. The days, yeah. and, that, and, and it also suited me because I needed the cash. And yeah, I, and the same yeah, with me. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I wasn't That's the investing, other thing. People I was forget. trading. Yeah. I was trading. Yeah. And I can remember I did this particular transaction and the two people I were involved with, I said, great, I've sold it. And they yeah. said, well, how much for? And I said, what the figure? And they said, well, no. And I said, well, what do you mean, no, it's a good profit? And they said, well, no, if you've made that much virtually over the weekend, yep. think how much we could make if we kept it for five years. Exactly. And I yeah. said, well, no, please not, because I need the money. You need to pay the, you need to pay the school yeah, fees you know, or the tax. Yeah. Or, but, you know. but it is that decision that you make. Together, though, it's, it? that, it's that decision, isn't it? Mm. Am I an investor? Am I a trader? Yeah. Or I, I, I think the answer is a combination, ideally, of, of all those things is mm. the answer. Because mm. sometimes you need to keep the cash flow, you know, a very good uh, developer, very, very good developer, now retired, always said to me, John, 
my bit of advice when I, when, he, when I started, his advice to me was keep the, keep the cash flow coming. Always be selling. I always love having uh, properties in auctions because I know I've sold it within 28 days. Yeah. You know, always keep that cash flow coming in. Always keep the money moving. Keep the properties moving. And I've always sort of uh, probably t done that too much in my mm. career. Say. Well, I can remember an old bank manager of mine always always used to say, you know, it's fine having assets. He says, but yeah. property d property doesn't buy a loaf of bread. It doesn't spot on. And, and there yeah. is a balance to it. There is mm. a balance. Mm. Okay. What's the best bit of advice you've ever had, uh, Nicholas? Come on, Property TV. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, probably from my father. Do your homework. Do yeah, do your homework. Spot yeah, on, especially TV, in your in yeah. your in your, yeah. in your professional side of it all. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All day, every day. So yeah, very sensible. Due diligence. Yeah. Knowledge is everything. Is. Knowledge is power. Okay, gentlemen. Well, there we are. That's all we've got time for in this half of the show. Join me again after the break when we'll be asking John and Nicholas more of your questions. You are watching Property TV. You are watching Property TV. Hello and welcome back to part two of Property Question Time with John Howard and Nicholas Sopedas. Welcome back, guys. Uh, Nicholas, mm. my company occupies a small service office. Until recently, the serviced office provider has seemingly charged a rent inclusive of any business rates. However, we've recently received a business rate bill from the local council charging us directly. I had understood that the small business occupying a relatively small office space, we would be exempt from this cost. Can the panel explain the regulations regarding exemptions for small businesses? Well, you can try. Good luck. <laughs> Good <one>. luck. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you, you say it was in a serviced office. Mm. So as we mentioned in the previous show, um, in regards to licenses, these are usually licenses. Yes. Um, so rent is inclusive of um, fees and everything else. So I would look at your agreement first and foremost. So if it is inclusive, I would inform the, the provider and the council. Now in regards to reliefs for service, char um, service charge for business rates, as I understand, anything under 15,000, there is relief. Anything under 15,000, 15, um, rateable value. Right. So for your viewers, the VOA, the Valuation Office Agency, set the rateable value from which they use a multiplier to calculate your business rates. So for small businesses, that multiplier, I believe, is, is 49.9 pence, and the standard is 51.2 pence. So actually, any, any rateable value under 51,000, the small business um, multiplier will be used. But as, as far as reliefs go, under 12,000 is fully exempt. And anything between twelve thousand one to fifteen thousand is apportioned accordingly. So effectively, it's going to be governed by the size of the premises yes. you're, you're yep. Um, yep. have on license. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, additionally to that, there are other reliefs. There's rural land relief. There is charitable reliefs. Um, there is a few exemptions for agricultural land, for uh, training facilities, and I believe welfare for disabled. Um, people as well, um, as well as a place of worship are fully exempt. Okay. So charities were, were rate free, but now it's twenty percent. Is that right? They pay twenty percent rates. Is it? I think. I don't know Possibly. for definitely. I haven't, but, yeah. haven't come and looked at the new. I, I mean, the one thing I would say with all this is that the, I don't know. You think about it, uh, guys. But for me, the, the 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 way rates are collected and calculated is so old-fashioned now it's way way out of date yeah there was talk about I mean this government have put have kicked it kicked it the can down the road for 10 years on it for me it ought to be collected when VAT is collected and it should be a percentage of their turnover that they claim on the VAT It'd be much much simpler you wouldn't need all these valuation officers yeah the valuations all out of date now I mean commercial rents have gone down in high streets as we know the mm. whole thing is just a mess and for me, if it was done on collected with with VAT, which was one of the ideas the government have come up with, mm. it would be much simpler. Yeah, it is a bit archaic in the way it is, it is done. Um, is there any relief for um, 
we've talked about the size of the premises mm. to the size of the business, i.e. under 10 employees or something? Not as far as I'm aware. Okay. Do with the, That's another good idea. The size, mm. the size of mm. the unit. Okay. Mm. It's how the ERVs are worked out. Yeah. yeah. It's made rental so values. F- first port of call, your, your landlord. Second port of call, the council, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And Definitely. You can, yeah. All right. you, can, you can appeal direct to the VOA as well. So you can get a, a, a specialist um, surveyor to do that for okay. you as well. I'm just wondering in this case, but you, you, you don't know, but perhaps the building was revalued yeah. and it suddenly yeah. stepped okay. over, the, this, uh, over yeah. the mark. Over the mark sounds like it, doesn't mm. it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, Jess. Uh, Mr. Howard, now then. Yes. Uh, I have a background of commercial estate agency very good. And I'm wishing to now go out on my own rather than be employed. Mm-hmm. I wonder if I could seek the advice of the panel as to whether I should start my agency concentrating solely on commercial transactions or if I should add residential agency to widen the scope of the business. Now, I know you have an interest in a small chain of agencies, John. <laughs> so, yes. um, Thanks for that. Nick, n- Nick's well qualified to speak on this one as well, by the way. So shall I start? Please. OK. So first of all, I would I would argue that a commercial agency um, is very different to residential. The residential game is very very tough. It's all about marketing. It's all about. And you don't think commercial agency is? Or? Well, let me come on to that in a minute. Right. So the residential side of it is hugely competitive. It always looks attractive to people, but I can tell you, it's a tough game. They say you're only ever three months away from going bust with. Uh, residential agency and you could argue the same with commercial in as much that if you don't sell anything for three months your overheads can't come down they're they're, they're, they're stuck mm-hmm. so it's a very it's a tough business property management um, mingled in it, within an estate agency is great because it's it, it's consistent income every month sure there aren't that many commercial agents that I think that I know, and I know quite a few of them, I work with them, that would make good residential agents. It's a very different business. Um, and uh, for, he, for me, um, if I were him, is it him, is it, or her? Might be her. Who knows? Um, I would stick with what you know, what you're good at. And if that's commercial, you've got perhaps some, some, some very good you know, um, clients who, you, who, mm. you, who, who might even retain you. I would work on that basis um, personally. Um, yeah, Nick, what do you, what do you think? Stick to what you're competent at, and then if you want to expand the business, bring mm. someone in as an expert in the uh, residential. That's a good field. idea. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And uh, Nicholas, as, as a surveyor, do you do you find the the two disciplines cross over? Are, are, are you called on to advise and um, you know give service on both both sides of the business? Yes, most definitely. Um, is that part so, of your requirement of, uh, with your qualifications? Uh, when you say a part of your requirement, well, I, I, I mean, I, I, to, I'm just thinking, for instance, a, for instance, a, a, a barrister is pretty well obliged to take on any case that he feels competent to do so. Well, I think that's always, and that's part of his training. And whether yeah. whether it's in a field of, of um, valuation in commercial or property, which mm. is where our background is. One of the main things is, is that you can say you are competent in order to take that on. For example, warehouses. If you're not, if you don't specialise in, in value in warehouses, yeah. it's not. Don't do it. In your field, <laughs> you know, don't do it. Yeah. Exactly. If you're not, if you don't feel competent. So one of the, the key things of a surveyor is to ensure that they are competent in that field or feel that they are knowledgeable enough to, to carry out the work. Mm. But no, we, we carry out both and, and most, um, most surveyors do. Uh, they do cross paths. Uh, definitely there, yeah. Okay. So there is there is a difference there between sort of agency and um, professional services. I, I would say, say there's, a, there's yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course. You know, these these residential agents, people think it's easy. Um, you don't normally get any money up front for doing the job. Mm. Whereas with commercial, quite often they charge a thousand pounds up front for putting the property. Yeah, you might be market, retained. Yeah, and you might be retained. It, it is a different. It is a different market. To be fair, completely they, yeah. different. And. And for me, um, never the twain should really mix. Mm. Okay, mm. John, as 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 uh, we're coming towards the end of the show, and we have you here, given your involvement in estate agency, mm-hmm. apart from your development, yep. um, uh, I was going to say objectives, but your your development activities, um, would you like to just 
give our viewers perhaps an oversight of how you see the market at the moment and how yeah. you see it going for the rest yeah, of the year? Absolutely. So um, last year was unbelievable for everyone. Everyone would come out of London, come out of these areas and, and, and buy houses with land. That has slowed right down. However, there are st people, if a nice property comes on the market between 500 and a million pounds, you know, in Norfolk, uh, if it's priced sensibly, there will be three or four buyers for it still, still. That is slowing down. And um, two, two ways to check that slowing down is one, that uh, how, on, on average, how long a property stays on the market. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And also how many times it's been reduced. And what you're seeing is properties are staying on the market longer and they're being reduced. So that's a sign that things are slowing down. Going forward, for me, we believe the, th the third, fourth quarter of this year is going to get very tough. Uh, we think that, you know, with inflation, with all these other issues, it, it may not affect some of the buyers we have because 50% of our buyers are cash buyers. Mm -hmm. But of course, they're selling in order to buy. And they will find, you know, further down the line, uh, first time buyers struggling, second time buyers not buying and all the rest of it. So towards the end of the year, we believe and I believe um, very strongly that the market will slow down um, considerably. And I think over the year, there'll be very little uplift mm. in value. I don't think it's going to go down over the year because it's gone up to start with. Um, and the other thing I would say is all the figures you get are three months old. Yes. Mm. So, you know, we see it happening like you do, Nick on yeah. the coal face, mm -hmm. but all the stats that you hear in the papers and everything are three months old. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all we've got time for today. So thank you again both very much. Indeed Pleasure for always, in thank you. So John Howard, thank you. Thank you. Nicholas Sapiris, thank you very thank much. You very much. I'm Stephen Galvin, join me again next time on Property Question Time.